We're here with the Reverend Caroline Ainsworth Hughes, who gave us a wonderful presentation on how to combine children's and youth ministries in a local church setting. Caroline, thank you so much for being here. We're so glad to have you and to welcome you back for this conversation. Glad to be here. My first question for you is that you have shared with us so eloquently about the gifts that can come when combining these two ministries. Can you speak to the challenges of attempting to enact this kind of thing as you put these oftentimes disparate pieces, children's ministry and youth ministry together? What are the roadblocks you've encountered in trying to do church in this way? It's a great question um, because I think we know that there are times uh, that we do want to keep those separate or think about ages, ages and stages for young people. But um, having shared, I think the benefits and the draw and the gifts that come out of combining, there certainly are roadblocks. Um, I think there's some real simple logistical ones, right? Timing. Um, when you think about kids who go to different schools or on different schedules, there's sports activities and there's you know different after schools pull them in different directions at different times. So there's just logistical conflicts. And then once we get into that kind of programming, I think sometimes we fall into the trap of kind of like unidirectional relationships that the big kids can do something for the little kids. And I push back and want to really name and look at that trap because I think that says something to our kids. It says, again, you're in process. When you're big, you have something to give or when you're older, you can do this. So we really want to think about when, what can our younger kids do and offer to the group? Can we make sure that everybody has a role no matter what age, what, what stage they're in? They're gonna engage the content differently. They're gonna give and share and participate differently, but really make sure that it's bi-directional or multi-directional so that everyone's involved and it's not just big kids doing and little kids watching. That's a big trap I wanna name and watch out for. Um, and then I just wanna you know, think about, look at your group and talk to them and, and notice where things are feeling pinched. Um, right now I've got a third, fourth, fifth grade youth group. They all go to school together. It's our second elementary school in town and it's working. And my fourth and fifth graders who were in that group last year when it was different and that third grade class wasn't involved are feeling a little pinched. Uh, they're feeling like, okay, we want a little bit of space for ourselves. Well then create that space. I'm gonna offer them an opportunity to come just those guys, just that group, not all the time, not in instead of their youth group, but in addition to an, an additional opportunity to name um, the particularity of what they're feeling and, and experiencing and see what we can do um, to get them more bought into that group where they are, yes, playing a role um, as older kids to younger kids, but also making sure they have a space that's just for them. So I think it's a both and at times, making sure um, there are ages and stages where um, our young people feel like they are in the group that they most identify with or maybe first identify with, but then also stretching them into um, groups that, that let them be with all, all ages and have them have different roles where they are both um, maybe being leaders and being led, where they are servants and they're hosts, um, letting them all have a role and all have something to give to the group. 